A few days ago, my daughter asked me if I can take this picture over here and uh, print it out as big as I can so she can put it in her room. I know, what little girl doesn't want to have a spider in her room? Well, this spider photo, it's a photo I took about a week ago and it is pretty cropped in. This is the original over here. And uh, I did some really heavy editing on this image. And then I also took it into Topaz Sharpen AI. I sharpened it. And then I took it to Topaz Denoise, removed all the noise. And in today's tutorial, I want to take it through Gigapixel AI. And we want to increase the resolution because it's so heavily cropped. I want to increase the resolution and then print it for her. The biggest uh, print I can make in my own home with my printer. It's a 13 by 19 inches, so that's what we will work with. We will increase the resolution of this image, we will print it as big as we can, and then we'll come back and look at it and see how good of a job it did. Now I'll have to admit, I used to never use Giga, Gigapixel AI because in the past it used to give some horrible, horrible artifacts. But they have come a really long way, especially over the last year. And now I am happy to tell you that it seems to perform really, really well. But enough babbling. Let's go to the computer. We'll um, edit this photo and we'll print it. We'll see what it looks like. So here is our image. And as I said, I already did a lot of edits on it. This is the original file, just for reference. And after all these edits, I ended up with this, but I want to crop it even further just to, you know, make a more impressive print. So I will go with something like this. And I make sure the eyes on the upper thirds and that looks great to me. Now, oh, you know what? I have to make sure I'm on the right crop size for my print. As I said, I'm going to do a 13 by 19 print. So I make sure I chose that crop. There you go. And that looks great. Now that I have my image, I want to send it into Topaz Gigapixel AI. And go edit a copy of it. And now the Gigapixel opened, we have to really look and see which one of these modules works for us. I know I want to increase the resolution by two times. You see, this is my original resolution, 3245 by 2220 pixel. And if I increase it by two times, that will give me a 6490 by 4440 pixel. And that will be plenty of pixels for me to print. Now let's go through all the buttons. As you can see, we have the original button here and when you push it, you will see, first let's go into the single view. And when you press original, then you will see ori your original file before you did your upscaling. It's still updating, it takes a while to update. It's just kind of like Sharpen AI, it takes a while. So this is the original. You can also click on your image to see the original and let go to see the processed file. Then over here you see the split view. This is my favorite view where you can scroll and on the left side you have your unprocessed image and on the right side you have your processed image. As you can see the processed image is just as good, just as many details, maybe even a little bit sharper. Then you have the side by side view. On the left side you have the original view and on the right side you have your updated processed view. Then you have the comparison view where you can see four different module. And this is a really good one. You have the navigator here. You can move this box around by moving this box or you can just move on your picture as well. And for this picture, I just really want to look at the eyes and pick the best module for this image. Over here on the right, you have the scale. You can scale the width or the height or you can keep the proportions, which I'm doing. And you can scale by 0.5%, by two times, four times, six times, and so on. I chose the two times because that will be plenty for my print. For the AI module, you have standard lines, art and CG, low resolution and very compressed. And as you can see, you have uh, five modules over here, but you only have four boxes. 
If you want to change one of this, you can click on it and then just, uh, you know, choose the one you want to display on that box. And that is very, very similar the way Sharpen AI works. Same thing just for the gigapixel. Then in the settings, we have suppress noise and remove blur. If we check out the settings box, then the program will automatically pick the best settings for our image. In this case, it chose suppress noise 18 and remove blur 41. Then you have additional settings as reduce color bleed. Sometimes when you upscale images, you might find your colors kind of merging one into each other. And then check in this box, it always helps. I leave mine checked on. And face recovery when you work with portraits, I leave this on as well, even though in here, in this case, we do not really have a human face. Face recovery strength, leave it at 90. I leave mine like that, I don't mess with that. For the zoom over here, you have at 100%, you can zoom to fit, zoom 50%, 100, 200, 400, or you can use this slider and just do a custom zoom for whatever you would like to see into your image. Now, looking at all these modules, I think the low resolution mode is probably the best fit for this image since I cropped it so much. And let's see, I have low resolution on here. Let's put something else in here. We'll go with standard and I have low resolution here. I will go with very compressed. We'll let all of this update and then we'll make a decisions on which module will work best for me. And now everything gets updated and really they're all very close, but I think I do like this very compressed or maybe low resolution. The other two modules, they just seem to be maybe a little bit too over sharpened. So I will go with low resolution. So I'll choose low resolution and then I will click apply. And now we have our image into Lightroom. This is the upscaled version. If we look here at the info, this is a 6490 by 4440. And this is the original photo we started with already edited photo this was 3245 by 2220 and then if we look at the raw image this is what it looked like so we went from raw to an edit and to upscaled it now if i keep toggling between the edited version where it was very cropped in and upscaled image i don't see any kind of funny artifacts i'm not losing any kind of detail everything looks nice and sharp and crisp now I am going to print this image and I will print it into my Canon Print Studio Pro. And I will make sure my Canon Pro 100 series is checked. The paper, I have Photo Paper Pro Luster. The size is 13 by 19. Um, and that's pretty much it. I will click print and I will see you in a second to check out my print. All right, photo is printed. All right, photo is printed and I am very, very happy with it. There it is, lots of details. Um, I use my Canon, I don't remember what it was called, something 100. And the paper I used is Pro Luster. And I really love this kind of paper because it's not very, very shiny and it's not matte either. If you never printed before, then you should know that when you're printing something with high detail, you usually want to print it on a matte photo because the ink stays together and you'll get a lot more details. If you're printing a highly detailed photo on a very glossy surface, then the ink kind of smeared a little bit and you end up with a little bit of loss of details. This Pro Luster, it's not matte, but it's not super glossy either. It's just kind of like a, I call it like an eggshell finish. It's in between. But the photo ended up beautiful. And now that I'm looking at it, I wish I would have left, maybe cropped it a little bit different and leave a little bit more space in this side where he's facing, just so he has some room to look at. I like to leave more space on that side, but it's printed. It's good enough for the you know few weeks that they will hang out in her room. And um, this was just like a quick review for Gigapixel AI. I totally recommend it. Do not be afraid of cropping your images. And uh, 
yeah, happy cropping. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.